Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming to this, uh, this forum. On behalf of the Rock Valley College Student Government Association and the students of the school, I would like to thank you all for your participation in today's forum for the audience, and thank you, uh, candidates, for attending as well. First, I need to read a statement on behalf of the college. Illinois law expressly prohibits the use of public funds to urge electors to vote for or against any candidate or pro proposition or be appropriated for political or campaign purposes to any candidate or political organization. First, I want to make mention, if everyone could turn their ringers off in the audience, I would appreciate it. If you could all take a minute to just check your ringers. Thank you. Questions will be moderated by myself, the student trustee. My name is Elijah Wortko, as well as Dr. Ashford, who is our vice president of student services. Four candidates will answer questions for an hour. Please keep your responses brief, about a minute and 45 seconds, as to allow each candidate a second uh, chance to answer as many questions as possible. If you'd like, you can start by taking a few minutes to introduce yourselves and tell a little bit about why you're running. And you can start in any order. All right. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Young, and I serve as the president and CEO of Midwest Packaging and Container in McChesney Park, Illinois. I'm a lifelong Rockford region uh, resident. I grew up here until I went away for school, uh, Division I scholarship down to Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. I came back here to uh, continue the legacy of a family company, uh, Midwest Packaging. And uh, from there, we've uh, increased in sales under my leadership. Uh, we've invested millions of dollars in technology and efficiencies there and uh, created 50 new jobs. Uh, I'm a firm believer that business leaders have a uh, great responsibility to community leaders. And I took that to heart. I graduated from Rockford, uh, the Chamber of Commerce Rock, uh, Leadership Rockford program, uh, alumni of the 2015-2016 uh, class there. I was also on the next Rock. I'm also currently on the next Rockford strategy team. I'm the, a, a member of the Board of Trustees for the Natural Land Institute uh, because of my love of the outdoors and conservation, and also in leadership at various young professional organizations. I'm running for the privilege of being on the board for Rock Valley College uh, because I see such great potential here. I'm really excited about the direction that the Rockford region and Rock Valley College has taken on, and I really am excited to be a part of that the solutions and the win-win collaboration that are going on here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Randy Schaefer. Um, my qualifications are a little bit different than the rest of the other candidates running. I'm a 26-year veteran of the Board of Trustees of Rock Valley College. I'm the longest serving trustee in Rock Valley's history. I'm the second longest serving trustee in the state of Illinois. I was also the only five-time chairman of the board of Rock Valley College. We did a lot of wonderful things when I was out here on the board. The campus, as you see it now, was a product of the boards that I were on, was on revitalizing and bringing this college to the 21st century. I have a love and a passion for this college. I am a graduate of it. I've got memorials in different places on the campus. There's two at Starlight alone for my parents and in-laws. Um, there were some things that we started, or that I was part of being started when I was on the board. I would like to finish those. Uh, I'm concerned about the drop in enrollment over the last year since I've been gone. I'm concerned about the amount of faculty and staff, that, wonderful people that have left since I've been gone. And I'm told, that's not a fair statement. I'm concerned that I'm hearing there's some disjointment between administration and faculty. I'd like to be a part of that, to get that straightened back out again, to have the atmosphere it was when I was on the board. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Gorski, my current uh, trustee, uh, filling a, a two-year vacancy, coming, that's coming to an end here. And uh, currently in my day job, I'm a project manager and technology manager for the American Dental Association. Uh, in Chicago, I'm also involved in a number of news, media, marketing efforts in the, in the region. Uh, but I'm running for re-election to RVC trustee because, like Mr. Schaefer, I'm concerned about the uh, turnover we've had in administration, staff, and faculty. And I'd like to stabilize that and do what we can to increase enrollment so that with a stable workforce and 
uh, at least a stable uh, level of uh, student enrollment, that we can make projects like Coleman Village a success and further tweak our, the balance between the liberal arts and, the, and, the, and our career and technical education uh, programs, because they both have a role here in our community and in the college, and uh, we need to fine tune that. Now on the board, um, I think we can do that, because we manage, we don't manage people, we're policy and governance, and uh, through a, a solid strategic plan, a facilities master plan, and an educational plan uh, laid forward before the board and voted on uh, before the board, I believe that's the way we can achieve these goals together. And I would hope that anybody who gets on the board, and if I'm serving with them, would agree that we need to lay out a strategy, have measurable uh, metrics uh, that we can see whether or not we failed or succeeded at them, and then adjust as we need going forward, working with the administration, since again, the, the board isn't there to manage, it's there for governance, policy, and direction. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Jared Funderburg. I am a proud alum of Rock Valley College, graduated from Rock Valley College in 2000. Uh, from there, I was able to go on to University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, degree in economics, communications. I uh, returned to Belvedere, Rockford, back in 2010, and since then I've been involved in government or economic development. I've served on the Growth Dimensions Belvedere Boone County Economic Development Council. I've served on the Rockford Area Economic Development Council. I've served on uh, the um, EDNI. There's a lot of acronyms of these boards that I've been on. I'm currently a vice president for business relations and investor relations for the Rockford Area Economic Development Council. The reason why I'm running, I, I, over the last eight years, I've, I've talked to so many different shops and businesses, and the concern we have for workforce development in our region is dire. I want to be a strong voice for the constituents. I want to be a strong voice for the plant managers. I want to be a strong voice for uh, the community leaders in the development of workforce. Uh, prior to me coming to Rock Valley College, I was in construction and suffered terrible injury. And if it weren't for Rock Valley College, I would not have been able to, to go forward with, with the career I have today. So I, I just see such tremendous opportunity. Thank you, I see tremendous opportunity for anybody that attends and graduates from Rock Valley College. Thank you all for that. Before we begin, I'd just like to make a disclaimer that the questions that will be asked tonight are from the student's perspective. These are not uh, meant to attack any specific group. They're, these are just the concerns that we uh, see through the Student Government Association's perspective. And I would also like to encourage anyone who's in the audience, if you have a question you would like to ask the candidates, you can come up here to this table behind me and you can write down questions and we'll try to get to few, a few of those before we end today. With that said, we'll begin our first question. This is a yes or no question. You are running for a six year term. Are you making a public commitment to the constituents of this community and to the students of this school that you will fulfill your six year term in its entirety before you seek any other political office? I will not seek any other office other than trustee for Rock Valley College. Probably ever. I really, <laughs> I really like this institution so my time is gonna be dedicated to this, this board if elected. Yeah, the question precludes a straight yes or no because it would preclude me from running for re-election. And as I was trying to explain to my uh, fellow trustee there, Gorski males die before the age of 65. I'm gonna be 62 at the end of this term if I win. I've given myself a 30% chance of dying in office and I'm sure there's some people in this room that will be glad to hear that happen. But uh, I don't really plan on running for anything else. I just like to survive my term. Thank you. A definite yes. My passion is with Rock Valley College and Rock Valley College only. Uh, I'm a first year, our first time ever uh, uh, campaigner. 
I hope I have a, a little better survival rate than Paul. And uh, yes, I am going to absolutely uh, commit to a six-year term. All right. Please describe the role of a trustee. As any elected official, your role is to represent those that elected you. I'm running on, on three points. One is workforce development, the other is a balanced budget, and the third is to represent and support the current administration. I strongly believe in these three points. Those are the three points I'm running for. I am not going to, uh, as, a, as a trustee, I just want to ensure that I follow through on that commitment. There is nothing more for me to do. There is no micromanagement of a board. I do not feel that as a role. It is to represent the constituents that elected me. Uh, thank you. I just have, I don't, do you have a printed copy of the question? Because it says our answer should not impact the college. I was hoping that our involvement as trustee would actually involve, impact the college and the community. And as a trustee, your role is uh, largely governance, policy, and working with the administration. So what you're gonna, some of the questions you're, you're gonna hear going forward, I'm actually gonna punt back to the administration because that's our role. Administration provides us with information to make educated decisions. We discuss it and we move forward with that, hopefully in agreement with the uh, in administration and the larger goals of the community. By definition, the Board of Trustees is to set policy and the financial health of the school. I see, also see it as the Board's responsibility to take care of the wants and needs of the students and its community. I want to make sure Rock Valley offers the best possible learning environment for its students and for its community. My perspective that uh, as a role of trustee, you are a policymaker. You're setting the strategic vision of the college. Uh, you're a good steward of the taxpayer, and you represent the uh, constituents of the college. And that includes the students, that includes the faculty, uh, that includes everyone who uh, works on this beautiful campus. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out, I think it's our duty as trustees uh, to work together in collaboration with our fellow board members to try to reach as, uh, as much as possible a unanimous decision for the good of the college. Um, thank you. This is another yes or no question. Board of Trustees elections are to be nonpartisan. Have you or will you accept endorsements, cash, or in-kind contributions from any internal employee group at the college? No. Technically, no. But somebody's going to ask a question about that. So all the campaign contributions I'm receiving are coming through RVC first, and you can check that on the State Board of Elections. And any endorsements are actually of the RVC first slate, which includes Dr. Letitia Wallace and Angie Bodine. I have not received any individual contributions or individual endorsements. And I'm guessing if I wasn't paired with those two ladies on the slate, I probably wouldn't get them. Mine will be short and sweet, no. No. All right. As a trustee, you will be faced with rising costs of operating Rock Valley College. Nearly 80% of our operating budget is above the line, salaries and benefits. Should the state fail to pass a budget, as they have in the past, would you support a property tax or tuition increase to support the rising cost of operation? How would you plan to deal with this operational challenge? Good question, tough question. I think uh, what we have to look at is we're at a cap on raising property taxes for operational cost. We're also at the level for raising tuition fees. If we wanted to raise property taxes, we would have to take this to a referendum, and that is something that I am not in favor of. I think that we can deal with the budget that we have in 2016, 2017, I sat on, on the, the board 
in a replacement like, like Mr. Gorski. And at that time, we had to make a tough decision on funding college operations and the budget. We were able to balance the budget. We were able to make uh, significant changes to allow for greater ease in access to funds going forward. I think it's under, it should be understood that when the state funds do come, well, as they come in, that we're, we're using them to support uh, programs that are not for the operation of the college. So with that being said, the, the tough decision that you have to make has been made in the past. I would not like to see that decision made in the future. I think that because of the decision that was made in the past, 20, uh, we won't have to, to go there again. So we tighten the belt, they tighten the belt, and we're in a good spot now. So that's how I would, I see the budget crisis. Well, we're not quite at our tax cap, but we're about you know a penny away from it. Uh, and I don't see us maxing it out, and I don't see us going for a referendum, and I'm comfortable with that. Uh, we are experimenting, so I guess the answer would be yes to a tuition increase, because we, we just kind of approved a, a tuition increase on our, our CTE uh, program, so about 20% of the courses here are gonna be charged an incrementally high, higher uh, uh, tuition. And that's just the first time we just voted on this and it's kind of an experiment and uh, I'm hoping it works out and helps alleviate some of the, the funding that we issues that we have. And other than that, our aggregate amount that we can increase for tuition is almost capped too. So that, that's not gonna happen. So. Uh, we would hope that the state would continue to provide their funding and that uh, that our foundation would get invigorated and it is a appear to be in certain uh, fundraising activities to help uh, supplement uh, funding for projects that we feel are important here at RVC. Well, I would hope that a raise in property tax and tuition would be the last resort of, of any of these ideas. I look at a little, once again, a little bit different, a little different perspective. Um, tech classes are a great deal more expensive to run than a liberal arts class. The increase that the board has proposed and puts, wants to put in for additional tuition to those type of classes is a wonderful idea. The college is 80% liberal arts, 20% technical. It's always going to be that. It's been there since the school opened up. We've got to help to offset the dollars of the CTE classes, and this is a great idea to bring it help to help this budget. The other thing I would look at, which you guys have already done to a degree, is look at the expenses and try to streamline. And beyond that, really take a hard look of what curriculums are out of date and not being utilized, and have the instructors go to a curriculum that is needed and phase out some of those type of classes. I want to give kudos to the uh, the president Doug Jensen and the, the current board. Uh, they were able to balance a budget, or RBC is a balanced budget without uh, allocation of any kind of state funds. I think that's fiscally responsible, uh, considering everyone's knowledge of the history of the and and uh, irregularly of the state's funding. Uh, it's something that can't really be counted on. Uh, there was hard decisions that had to be made to get that done. But as we move forward uh, with this fiscal responsibility and, and, a, and a passing budget, it's important to kind of hit our sweet spot as we introduce uh, new courses and as we enter new uh, areas where we're perhaps expanding CTE uh, courses through the Barbara Coleman facility to make sure that our unit costs are in line and we're functioning. Uh, just because we're increasing enrollment or because of, of other things, it doesn't necessarily mean that these courses are, are profitable. Um, so, I would believe I would say no to a property tax, of course, and d I do support differential tuition, which was passed at the last board meeting, which uh, equaled the playing field as t in terms of our operational budget. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I wanted to remind everyone: you don't have to answer in any specific order, but if you want to keep it going, I'm fine with that too. One of the major challenges facing all units of government in the state of Illinois is the looming pension crisis. There are conversations that this pension and 
OPEB liability should be placed at the local college. Currently, this would be about an $18 million annual liability to the college. As a trustee, how would you fund this obligation if it were to be passed from the state to the college? So let's just, so let's just step back to that last question with the tough decision that was made because state funding was suspended. They were able to balance the budget. Is this working? They were able to balance the budget without the state funding. We have a balanced budget and now we're receiving the state funding. They're using those state funds to help fill an account, pad an account to take care of those pensions. The OPEB, I think there's about four and a half million dollars in that balance now. So where would we be if that tough decision wasn't made? We'd be short on four. We probably would not have any insight on how we would fund that, that pension liability if the tough decision wasn't made. So going forward, I think uh, keeping a balanced budget on the current track and then using state funds to help fill that account to ensure that retirees have their pension, they have their retirement is critical. And I think it's been a very good step for the college. And on the, I just wanna make a note on the previous question or some of the answers on the CTE differential. Uh, again, that was brought forward to the board from Princeton Jensen and his administration and we discussed it and we, he seemed to get a, a, a team agreed on it before he came to the board. So it makes it really easy when everybody seems to be in agreement on that. So thank you very much for that. Makes it a lot easier as a board member when everybody's done their homework to, on something like that. And it speaks to the state funds too. It, the state funds, okay, we get funding from tuition, state funds and local taxes. We've kind of reserved the state funding because it's been coming in late, but it's not like we're not spending it and it's not part of the budget. Uh, we put it into a contingency fund, which yeah, we have used it to help pay off some of the liabilities, but also some other uh, projects going forward. So I don't want to make people think that we're completely doing without some of the state money where we're, we're, it's not necessarily a reserve, but a contingency and allocating it, allocating it as uh, needed. But I would continue that practice that we've been doing and uh, help pay off the, those liabilities uh, with the money that we've kind of put into the contingency fund. Well, to me, the pensions is a very, very important all you people of the faculty and staff that put in the blood, sweat, and tears at Rock Valley deserve to have their pension. I would hope the state, if they would do something like that, would give the colleges some time of a grace period to work in not just an $18 billion, you know, here next month you gotta kick this in. It would be a big hit to Rock Valley. Um, I think there'd be had to be some valuation on the, the fund one, I think you'd have to have to look at the um, reserve funds and how best to allocate that. And you'd have to be some serious hits to some of the curriculums and stuff in the college. I mean, it's, I don't like to say that, but 18 million is a lot of dollars to have to come up with in a very short period of time. Yeah, as the state continues to try to get their act together in terms of funding and, and possibly putting this pension uh, liability onto local uh, organizations such as Rock Valley College is important to be cognizant about uh, our, our financial future. Uh, and I, I, I applaud the board for putting aside, I believe it was a few years ago, putting aside $3 million to, uh, to designate for this outcome, this possible worst case scenario. Um, that kind of decision making is something that I would like to continue if I was elected to the board to make sure that we are covered uh, in the in the event of the of this of this occurring, that this would be our responsibility. We have one of the questions from the audience. How do you plan to get to know the student body and their needs? I guess part of that I would feel through the student student government association and our student trustee. Um, I would hope that the students would come to you and the SGA and put out the things that they feel are important and needs that they see at the college, and then you would come to us and dress and say, here's what we're hearing. I mean, we've had Spencer did a great job. He would do that to us. I've had several trustees or student trustees over the years, and that's exactly what they would function on. They would have forums to get the input from the students 
And I, I would expect a student trustee to bring that to our board. Yeah, I'd like to echo it's, it's important as a, as a board to work uh, with a student trustee closely uh, as he represents the, the students and their, and their needs and their views. I uh, also think accessibility is incredibly important. Uh, in my company, I walk the floor as much as I can. I hand out checks. It's a very uh, uh, a family type of setting that uh, everyone in my company, from the very, very bottom to the very top, there's transparency and there's open communication. Uh, so, of course, the students are a, a huge, huge part of RVC as, as they are the lifeblood of our organization, and their views are essential to what we do in a day-to-day uh, capacity. I like Randy's idea, working through the trustee forums and the like. Mr. Schaefer, it's good. You know, it says 26 years of experience kind of shows. Um, and I would not, not mind serving with you on the board. So, uh, and as I was, and you may find this hard to believe though, when I first started on the board, I was told I couldn't talk to anybody in administration or anybody outside of the board. And actually one of our board members told me to be quiet for the next two years in an open meeting. Uh, that's not my style. Uh, I'd be glad to talk to any student or any student group uh, that would like to discuss. But again, the board's not there to manage necessarily. It's to take recommendations from other organizations or the administration and move those ideas forward. And Bob Trojan's laughing back there. It was Bob that told me to be quiet for two years and I had a two-year term. Yes, you did. It's in the minutes. Let me go look it up and dig it up. I can't imagine why he'd tell you to be quiet for two years. So I, I really enjoy, ever since I've came to Rock Valley College, I enjoy learning. And yeah, you can sit in, through the student forums and things like that, but I, I is Jerry, Jerry Labai, he does the, the film here, correct, over, does anybody know Jerry Labai, Professor Labai? I went to school with that kid, good friends growing up, when I came back, he gave me a tour of his studio, and I'm just absolutely thrilled and proud for what he and others have done here with that, with that education avenue. And so I guess I'm not going to go sit in business statistics class again. That No way. But I would certainly like to uh, walk the campus with students when possible. Go to, you know, the athletics, there's huge things. Uh, Anything that you can do with students outside of class is a good way to learn, and I want to learn what they have to say and share about their education and their experience here. Uh, that is the best way that I think that you can take the recommendation and have that in your, in your thought process and perspective as you're making decisions on behalf of the students and the, and the constituents of the district. Communication with instructors is critical for students. As a member of the Student Government Association, one of the biggest complaints we get is that students aren't able to connect with instructors in a timely manner and that office hours aren't accessible. How would you define acceptable office hours and response time to students' emails? I guess I, I'm not, what is the current rate on returning an email to a student? Is there a timeline to that or? I don't know, in my practice it's, in my practice in business it's, you wanna be as efficient as possible, you wanna respond as quickly as possible, you wanna, you wanna show the student or the person on the other end of the communication that you're, you're there, so uh, I'm not gonna suggest 28, you know, 30 minutes for a response time, but 24 to 48 hours in the business world is certainly an acceptable time to, to respond and I don't think that should be different for any other um, educators or, or the like. I think that a timely fashion to show respect to a student, I mean, if you have a test in seven days and, and they don't respond until the ninth day, it doesn't really help you. So I think it's important to show your respect to the student and respond as quickly as possible at a maximum of two days. 
And I gave you a heads up on this. Some of these things are going to punt back to the administration. This would have to be a recommendation coming back to the rec uh, administration to the board. Uh, but in terms of my business, kind of like uh, Mr. Funderburg's, is a typically end of business day. However, if you're faculty or staff and you're and you're working late into the night or you're at late classes or something, so your end of the day is kind of a bit different than a normal business hour. So I would hope 24 to 48 hours on the outside. Now my son graduated uh, last May, and he never he told me he never had a problem getting in touch with somebody or t you know timely timely response here. So it's, I. Feel sorry for anybody that uh, that does, but the administration has a uh, a plan. They work with the faculty, and they want to bring it forward to the board. Go get them. At least I'm on the board for another month, so let's let's see if we can get that done. Well, my boss has always told me that you should at least acknowledge if you've gotten the voicemail or email. Um, I feel personally feel the instructors should have time every day to meet with students as needed. I also feel that emails should be responded to within 24 hours. I mean, it's, it's all about the students. The students have got to come first. I think office hours and communication between students and teachers, uh, it has a lot of variables. Uh, of course, it depends on an instructor's course load. It, it depends on the situation of the student, if they're a uh, the demographic of an average RVC student is not an 18-year-old who's a full-time student. Uh, he's a t he or she is a 26, 25-year-old who might have a part-time job, might have a, have a child, uh, and a lot of other obligations as well as the faculty. Uh, I think virtual communication could bridge a lot of gaps there uh, as opposed to traditional maybe office hours, but also um, we have a, a fantastic faculty here that's long-tenured. And uh, frankly, I'm not, I'm not an educator, and I'm not going to tell them how to, how to do their job. Uh, I don't think this is really within the role of the trustees to kind of dictate that. Thank you. A portion of the student activity fee is designated to clubs and organizations. Do you think student club activities should be eligible for credit? For me, that's a tough question because what is a, what is the club doing? I think we can, we, we know there are clubs that are very productive and they're educational and there are clubs that are, are different in that sense from that. But as a trustee member, I think that you would want to punt that to the ICCB and an organization, organizations like that to to make the recommendation and to make the the standard of credit for club activity. And I think, but I also wanna say club activity is strongly encouraged. It's a great way to know your, your fellow students, great way to learn, but as a trustee, I would have to rely on the, the ICCB. Um, I'd asked the administration to put forward a model, uh, compare it to other institutions, put forward a model for this, uh, credit for student club participation, uh, so we'd have something to chew on. Uh, because one, I don't know if, it, if you plan on doing it for all student activities or clubs, or just a few. Uh, and again, yeah, what's the nature of them? So I'd have to see a plan. I'm, you know, as a project manager, I like, I like seeing plans. And um, so, but I could see, looking forward, somebody making a good argument for it. But I'm not going to give you any tips. Um, uh, so I, I'd like you to have you to come forward for yourself. And if if not you, your successor. Okay. Well, I think I think all clubs are very important to part of being part of student life. A teacher's leadership and a teacher's team building. Unfortunately, I think making it a credit class would have to go through Springfield and the bureaucracy of what would be considered a credit class, a credit club, I mean, and getting all the colleges and the states to agree to it and get agreements back and forth that even recognize it as a, as a credited thing. Something you might want to think about, though, my daughter told me about this. She went down to, to University of Southern Florida, and they've got this down there. She calls it a co-curricular transcript. It says it's a way for students to track and highlight their leadership and involvement on campus that can be used as a foundation for a resume in the future. It can also be transferred when transferring to some four-year universities. 
Maybe that's an option for you guys to look at. Yeah, I agree with my, my panel mates up here as far as uh, the accreditation red tape and the possible things we'd have to jump through to make it done. Um, but just, I would also like to add on to that that uh, as someone who's been involved in student organizations and been involved in clubs uh, when I was in college or when I was a student, uh, it's inherently student run. And I believe that if it was uh, offered as a, as a course credit, it would kind of change the nature and the spirit of these clubs and organizations. Uh, and I think there's a lot of value added in doing these. And you, you get, it's, it's great resume builders. It's great uh, student life. It's great uh, leadership. Uh, and it's wonderful. And it, it might be a bit uh, watered down if it became just another course uh, because you'd have to do the logistics, the policies, get faculty involved, and whatnot. Thank you. As student trustee, I recently attended an Illinois Community College Board Student Advisory Committee where I was encouraged to promote career and technical education pathways at the community college and K through 12 levels. Would you, as a trustee, share this interest? Uh, absolutely, I would. Uh, I think that if you look at it, some of our collaborations already happening at, at RPS and other different uh, districts, uh, running start, dual credit uh, option being uh, offered by RPS has been utilized and have been a fantastic success story for some of our young people in our community. Uh, so why not extend that success story to CTE courses? Uh, I think one of the biggest things that uh, Pathways and CTE or uh, Running Start dual credit programs provide for young people is hope. I think that one of the biggest things that if you're a um, a Rockford area uh, youth from, you know, age, let's say age 12 to 15, you're in a cycle where higher education is not a priority. Uh, your parents didn't get higher education. You, you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. You don't see any hope. You don't, you just think you're going to work a dead end job and continue that cycle. Uh, so these kind of pathways uh, create a fantastic opportunity for students to, to be on the right track for a high quality job right here in our backyard. Well, I think that the CTT, CTE programs are huge, um, but I see it more than that. I see what we need needs to really be done, both the liberal arts side and the CTE side, is a passion built into students from K through six. You've got to build that passion that they want to have the higher education, be it either side of the house, it doesn't matter, but they want to move forward. They want this in their life. They don't want to just settle for a job at, at brand X for the rest of their life, making minimum wage. Pathways are huge. We've got to extend those. We've got to make more partnerships to extend that, both say on the liberal arts side and on the CTE side. Uh, we're already voting on, we've already taken action on partnerships and the like. Um, my voting record supports uh, the CT pathways at the community college and K-12 levels. Um, and if for those people that would like to increase like CT type from 20% to 30 to 35, we, it, it, it just the funding just isn't there unless somebody contributes it to the college. So we're going to have to keep the mix we have maybe increase it a little bit, but there's not much there. But we like to continue working with, and especially RPS 2, 205, which kind of kicked back the number of students that they're allowed to go through the program, like to get the numbers back up in that program. And um, and I, as I mentioned to the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm not quite sure they, they thought maybe I was joking, but uh, they need to make nursing jobs, people understand that, but some of the other jobs that we're talking about and that like Coleman Village will center around and the like, um, the people, the, the business owners need to make those jobs interesting uh, or advertise them a little bit better to people in, in the early ages to learn about them when they're younger and in, in, in middle school and the like so they know that there's, this is an interesting job this is the, and this is a good paying job and I can stay here without having to, you know, move out of my uh, uh, community uh, and I just really don't see that marketing happening and so I suggested that they contact uh, Dave Costello here and to say hey work on commercials that you know make these types of jobs more interesting to uh, drive enrollment in the programs I think I think the pathways is a remarkable thing that we've done here in district 205 I am so proud that our 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 community has done that. I think it's just great to find a way to f for students to, to f find their passion 
in a career early on. And with the Running Start program out of Boone County, I know that there's just been tremendous su success with that. Any, if, if I would have qualified for the Running Start program, my parents would have been absolutely thrilled with the idea that I can graduate high school with an associate's degree. So absolutely support that. But I would also like to say that it's in the best interest or the community need. So I would, su I would support what the constituents need. So if it's the community need to ramp up CTE courses, then, then we, uh, you know, we, w we work hard to find a way to make sure that happens. But absolutely. We had a question from the audience. Will FAFSA grant monies ever be available for paying for tech classes? If not, what means will you create to help students fund tuition and fees minus loan debts? I think I'll just answer that one. Uh, financial aid is available for our, our technical and education courses. There's formulas, there's eligibility, and there's other things that must have to be taken into consideration. If you would like, whoever asked the question, if you want to meet with me right after this, I'll be happy to explain to you the best I can. And we have a, another question from the audience. And this one says, uh, how do you feel about RVC providing student child care? Well, in my time on the board, we've had this discussion innumerable times. Um, the first thing that has to be decided on is what do you want? Do you want it as a pure daycare drop-off when the students are in class? Do you want it as an educational? Do you want this taking these kids to like a preschool type of idea? And from that point, it's very expensive. Which way are you going to put it? Where are you going to put it on campus, a dedicated space to handle this? There, there is a, a lot of underlying and difficult decisions that have to go along with just saying, yeah, I want daycare on campus. It's a wonderful idea, but it's much farther reaching than just saying, yeah, we want to have daycare. I'd support a partnership with somebody that could provide that type of service, allow us to focus on education, uh, much like the partnership we have for like the wellness clinic here, um, work with somebody in the community to, to help provide those services, and I believe it's the services that we should work on a partnership for. Yeah, child care is a, is a definite barrier in our community to, uh, for many people seeking higher education because um, the cost of daycare, the cost of uh, having uh, reliable family members or friends to be able to watch uh, young children at home. Uh, again, our demographic, our average student, if you will, is, is likely a single mom or, or a single father in some cases. Uh, and this kind of barrier is something that uh, I would encourage discussion on trying to remove at RVC, but I would also uh, agree with Randy that it needs to be defined in its scope um, uh, before its implementation. So, and I like Paul's answer that the quickest way to, to address this issue is to find a partnership to deal with with, with child care. Uh, taking it a step further though, we do have to lobby our state legislatures to have them cut back the regulations on what, it, uh, what the need is to care for a child. Uh, working in the healthcare field, uh, there's a reason why the hospitals have such a hard time. It's, such, uh, it's so costly to provide uh, child care. And when you have RNs that are not qualified to, to care for a child, you know that there's a problem with our state regulations on that. So I'm all for a partnership. I, I do agree that uh, a mother or a father that wants to get to class and they need to have some sort of emergency if they don't have a, a plan in place for child care, it's important that we, we work to some sort of resolution for that. But the cost, again, is outrageous and it's something that does need to be addressed, not just for the sake of RVC, or the, the community of Rockford, but for the state because it affects everybody here. All right. <clears throat> Much of the recent discussion in the community has been placed on technical education. Coleman Village has been a hot topic that you've been asked about at each forum. Briefly explain your position on liberal arts versus technical education at Rock Valley College. 
Yeah, uh, some of the people on the board kind of laughed at this when I mentioned it, but about 2004, 2005, I wrote a little map about uh, putting a college on that Barbara Coleman property and actually putting a, a dorm there and acquiring uh, Marinelli Field, which is, I guess, uh, would be a swimming pool right now uh, and not a baseball field, but uh, it's a sporting activity and they have some classes down at the airport. Uh, I wasn't sure if it'd be Rock Valley College or it'd be Rockford, uh, Rock Valley College or Rockford College, now Rockford University. And I was thinking of a partnership probably with some foreign um, institution so we could have a international, you know, uh, exchange of students. Uh, but the plan that we have works for it. I mean, the board's voted on it. I mean, we, we're just kind of waiting for the city to wrap up its uh, its funding and the cleanup and, and the like. Um, looking forward to moving it forward. Uh, I, I, I feel, though, that any the, the programs are, are jeopardized by the instability we have in leadership at the administration level, staff and faculty, and the not addressing declining enrollment. We need to address the instability in staff, faculty, administration, stabilize that, and uh, do what we can to uh, increase enrollment and then market the heck out of that new facility. Well, I, like I said a little bit earlier, um, I think that the Coleman Village is running a big spotlight on the tech programs of the college. It was, and it still at this point, is an 80% liberal arts, 20% technical side. Um, I'm certainly not opposed to increasing more in tech side, but there's going to be some other partnerships to help offset the cost of these type of programs. Like I said before, such as nursing, it's very expensive. Um, this town is built on manufacturing. I think it's wonderful if we can get the, the partners to help expand the programs, but Rock Valley, first, let's say first and foremost, but is a transferable 80% liberal arts college. It'll, I'm hopefully, and from my perspective, will stay somewhat to that point. But we can increase the CTA type, CTE type classes if we do it correctly and thought out. I just wanted to say that uh, one of my core beliefs about RVC is that we want to serve the best interest of our, of our students in our community. Uh, there's something that is going on in our community. We have this skills gap uh, between uh, workers and the skilled jobs that are going on in our community that are in demand. Uh, we have manufacturers that are, are cycling through unskilled laborers. They're taking time to, to train uh, laborers into positions they might not be best suited for. Um, workforce development and skills training is the number one issue for our manufacturers. Absolutely across the board, you can ask any manufacturer in our community and they'll all be unanimous. Uh, I, I applaud Rock Valley College for taking the initiative to, uh, to do this, uh, to invest in Barbara Coleman facility. It would be a, a state-of-the-art training center, and it would kind of put Rockford on the map as an epicenter for manufacturing, for advanced manufacturing. Um, I think bringing business partners into this is crucial, and that's actually one of my uh, things I'm most looking forward to if I was to be elected to the Board of Trustees is to be a... Uh, uh, to seek out business partnerships in the manufacturing community and create pathways, create programs into this Barbara Coleman village uh, that they can uh, contribute lab materials, they can uh, uh, contribute equipment in, in returns for, of course, training uh, pipelines basically into their manufacturing uh, facilities, which they're desperately needed. I am all for the, the Coleman Village project. Let me say that after high school, my passion was construction. I was a carpenter. I did that until my body expired with some accidents. So I came to Rock Valley, got an education, went to Whitewater, like I said, went back into construction. I enjoyed it. I didn't start wearing a suit until 2012, 2011, because there just was nothing available in construction, period. You really could not make a living in construction. That's how bad the market was. So. Supporting CTE and to what Randy said, a community that is built on manufacturing, we must do everything we can to train the folks here in our community to work here in our community. Over the last two years, we've just seen an incredible resurgence in manufacturing. We are desperate for people to do all kinds of jobs on, on different machines. And you walk into these shops today, and they're completely different than what they were 50 years ago. 
you walk into Coleman Village and you get a degree or you get certified in different courses through that advanced tech school, you're going to be able to get a job in advanced manufacturing and then you're going to be able to find another job in advanced manufacturing. You're going to climb, you're going to climb the ladder of success in manufacturing, just like in nursing. You can go to school here, get a degree in nursing, get a bachelor's in nursing, get a master's in nursing, run a department at a hospital, you could very well end up being the president of that hospital. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of talent we need to stay here in Rockford. We have to train and uh, support the students of today for tomorrow. Final question. Rock Valley College has a tremendous history in athletics. Since 2011, there have been 13 national championships. Recently, our bowling team was the national runner-up, and last week, our men's basketball team also took second in the nation. Our student athletes demonstrate success in the classroom and in competition. What do you see as the future for RVC athletics, and how would you support this vision? I like to see it progress as it's going, um, possibly and take a look uh, with the advice from the administration on uh, bringing back football that seems to be popular in the community. Uh, for me, it racked my body at a very young age, but uh, some people seem to be very interested, and so I'd like to get the feedback from the community and from the administration and see what they can uh, pitch the board on that. And I just want to touch on, you, you note here that our student athletes demonstrate success in the classroom and competition. So not only do they, they excel in, in, in coursework, but they sell in something outside of their coursework. And this, I think that speaks not only to the athletics here, but to the mix between liberal arts and the tech technical. You know, my background is chemistry, biology, and computer science. And I would not hire anybody that didn't participate in some type of student club, credit or non-credit, uh, theater, music, or some other type of creative type of thing. Because even in technical, you're looking for, especially in technical, you're looking for people that can come up with solutions on the fly sometimes. And sometimes that comes from a different part of the brain, and that tends to be on the liberal arts side very often. Thank you. While I was on the board, we made two critical decisions pertaining to sports. The first one was that each sport was to maintain 51% of local athletes. To me, that was absolutely critical. We need to support the local, we need to draw them to college to do these sports. Second of all, we made a decision to go to full-time coaches versus part-time. That's had a huge impact on the quality of the coaches that have come to Rock Valley and the quality of the athletes who are producing in Rock Valley. You ask what I think of the future? Success breeds success. We have wonderful coaches. I can see more quality coaches coming forward, such as Misty did, with being able, being able to take the next step forward in her career. And I see the athletes we're having here moving on to four-year four colleges and being very successful also. We've made two huge decisions that I think have had this, this tremendous impact on the sports in Rock Valley and hope it continues going forward. Well, first off, congratulations to the bowling team and the basketball team for their incredible, incredible runs. Uh, very proud of these uh, young men and women uh, and their contributions to the college. Uh, I'm a former Division I athlete. Uh, I understand that uh, you are a student athlete with a student being first. Um, so we're not really producing pro athletes necessarily at this level, but we're producing student leaders. We're producing young men and women who are leaders in their community. And I love to see things like, uh, I've just been doing research and there's a high five Friday where it seems like the basketball team is going out to local elementary schools and encouraging young people and, and being a real community presence uh, in, in this area. Um, so I, I completely support the vision of the athletic program and I'm a, a champion and a big fan. Completely, completely support student athletics. Love it. Love that uh, the school here has had such great success. Uh, as a uh, as a trustee, though, I, I would have to say that there are if fencing was a problem here. I don't know. Do we have any fencing in in, in the state of Illinois? We I don't think we have community college fencing. So th there has to be a balance to the support or the sport that you do support. But uh, absolutely, 100%. Love the idea of strong athletics. Uh, 
as a trustee, though, I would take into consideration that of the community need. Well, that concludes today's forum. So first of all, I'd like to thank the candidates. If we could give them a round of applause.